Hi, Mark. How are you? Hi, Manuel. I'm well. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. And uh, really curious to learn today about the EU Pay Transparency Directive and how we support clients in uh, handling this topic. But before we dive into the topic, I wanted to ask you if you could introduce yourself to our audience. So my name's Mark Venzon. I'm a client partner. I work out of our Amsterdam office and my primary focus is supporting our clients with the EU Pay Transparency Directive and their reward strategy needs. Perfect. So you're exactly the right person to talk to. Um, and what would you say? What's the main challenge that uh, our clients are facing when thinking about this topic? So from the EU Pay Transparency, the main challenges we see with our clients at the moment is they're starting to prepare for the impact of the directive, which is more significant, the impacts of putting the onus of proof to prove that there is no material pay gaps that are unexplained in the organisation, is encouraging our clients right now to look in detail forensically at what is occurring inside the organisation in terms of understanding what are the gaps today, what can they do to solve those gaps, but more importantly, how do they prepare their management structure and their disclosures to communicate what those pay gaps are and what the organization is doing about it? Okay, that's quite uh, some stuff uh, to, to do. So how do we help them solve it? So there's two things that we do at Corn Ferry. The first one is, is working with the clients to work out what we call the readiness assessment. So that's looking through strategically, how does the pay transparency directive interplay with the DE and I initiatives, the overall talent initiatives, the internal and external communication initiatives, and what it means for the employer brand, which is a significantly large area of topic. So that is preparing for the pay transparency. Then what we help clients with is actually on the hardcore analysis around what those gaps are, and more importantly, what is causing gaps between uh, elements of the workforce and how that we do that is we take the approach of equal pay for equal value so we look at the roles we look at how those roles compare to each other and then we run our analysis across the top of that to make sure that organizations can be confident that they don't have any structural uh, elements of difference between pay and also to ensure that they actually have fairness embedded into their pay platform strategies and pay policies Okay. And now, when you experience supporting clients uh, in the way you just described, what would you say is the result? What was what is the result so far of our work with clients? Yes, our approach is what we call from know to do. So the first part is to know the gaps. So the clients that I work with, and um, in, the, in one specific case, which I like to share with you today, is where we supported that client. It's a global organization, it's headquartered out of the Netherlands, and has operations all over the world. And as part of their focus, they knew that the pay transparency could be a challenge for them in explaining where their gaps are and in which markets their gaps are. So our approach to support them was to help them understand what is occurring in the organization. So we go through our detailed analysis, run the regression analysis over the gaps to work out whether those gaps are justified or not justified. And then we support them with their executive board to prepare a summary overview of what is occurring in the organization as a high level analysis to make sure the executive board knows what's going on and the local HR team has a plan in place to uh, be ready for the EU pay transparency. And then of course, we go into much more detailed analysis at a country level so we can work with their local HR teams and their local management teams to start addressing those gaps. Right, so they really have an overview of where are the gaps, where are the challenges and, and how to prepare and deal for the directive, right? Absolutely, because this client felt it's very important based on their values, their CSRD commitments and their voluntary disclosures to go that level further. Some firms will want us to analyze the gaps so at least they know uh, and then their approach is more towards compliance. Some firms will actually use the EU Pay Transparency Directive and anchor that very, very solidly into their overall BE&I and talent management processes. Every client approaches it slightly differently, and we adjust and adapt our approach to work with our clients' needs. Great. Thank you so much, Mark, for sharing this peak insight into how we work with our clients regarding the EU Pay Directive. And Yes, if you are interested to uh, dive into the topic, just let us know. Mark is more than happy to discuss the topic more in detail. And Mark, thank you and have a great day. My pleasure. Thanks, Manuel. Talk soon. Cheers.